The Dentamax clinical charting screen is very easy to use, but yet extremely powerful. There's lots of ways of getting to the charting screen. On the left-hand side of your screen, you can go ahead and click on View Chart. Um, you can get to it from the patient's record and very other, various other places. The preferred method for me is just to do it right from my appointment book. This is my work schedule for the day. Here's John Cook, the patient I'm seeing. I'll left-click on it to select his patient appointment, and then I'll right-click with my mouse, and every place I can go to from the appointment appears, including the charting screen. So I'm going to go ahead and go down to View Chart and left-click on that to select my chart. This will immediately take me over to the charting screen. As you will note, uh, a little pop-up appears that shows that my patient is allergic to latex gloves and to codeine and is taking aspirin for their heart. Uh, my front desk person entered this in in a different screen and it pops up here as I go from my appointment to the charting screen. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, I could. These pop-ups are informative. They do serve their purpose, but they can become annoying. So I can suspend this pop-up for the rest of the day if I choose to. Do not pop up this patient alert for me today. We'll go ahead and click on OK. This charting screen, as a clinician, is your home base. Okay, And so um, most of the things that you're going to be doing as a clinician are in this screen including the alerts that, the, uh, that popped up. If we want to change those alerts, you can see that appears in red, so we know that there's alerts there. We might find out from our patient that uh, they did very fail to include that they are also, uh, they also have asthma. So we can go ahead and add additional alerts if we want right here on the fly, directly from your home base, from your charting screen. We can add additional medications. You can also type in any additional alert that we could think of for the list or medication, just right here where it says patient alert, and that will pop up when you go into the charting screen. Let's go ahead and go back to the charting tab. Uh, this screen is highly customizable, modifiable, if you will. Um, let's go ahead and right click within the charting screen. Um, if you want to change all of the teeth, the primary teeth, all you have to do is click on change all the primary. Um, let's say that uh, you see lots of preteens. Maybe you might want to change it to mixed dentition. Okay? Maybe in this case, uh, tooth A is really a permanent tooth, so you can right click on a certain tooth and change it to be permanent or primary. Okay? If you are a pediatric dental office and you exclusively see kids, well, perhaps you'll want to have the screen pop in as a default to primary. So you can actually change the settings in the software so that when you go to the charting screen, they'll always appear as mixed dentition, primary, or, or permanent teeth. Or you can change it manually like we are doing here. Let's go ahead and change them all back to being permanent. Um, on the left-hand side of your screen, you're going to see these little menus that you can sequence through, and you'll see buttons on each one of these menus. These buttons represent procedure codes or multi-codes, which are a group of procedure codes. Okay, And you can just hover your mouse over the button to see what it means. And so in this case, if I go down to perhaps down here, this is a crown, a porcelain crown. Click on the tooth. Not only does it graphically appear here at the top of the screen, but also here at the bottom of the screen as a treatment planned item. One of the great benefits of Denimax is that you can modify the charting screen to really fit your staff so they can use this technology. Um, let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go ahead and right click in one of these menus and we're going to say, you know what, we're going to add a code here. Add a code. Now what we'll go ahead and do is add a procedure code. If I want to add perhaps a, uh, a uh, periapical code, D0220, we can go ahead and select that and that will add an individual code. We'll click on our image here and add a little icon that might fit that description. Um, so we'll add one that looks like a, a periapical. And now when we click on that button and click on the charting area of the screen, it's going to go ahead and add a periapical x-ray. Okay. So easy to add these buttons. You can move them around, appear in different places. Um, you can even add full-on menus. So I'll right-click in here. I'll add a menu. Okay, and let's say that Jane is my dental assistant, and I'm going to make a menu just for Jane. I'll go ahead and click on OK. There's Jane's menu. I'll right-click in here, and I'll add maybe another code. Maybe we'll go ahead and do a, a root canal for a molar, D3330. Click on that, and I'll go ahead and select an image that might fit that description. And let's go ahead and look at our list. Here's one that looks like a perhaps a root canal for a molar. Click on Save. Um, let's go ahead and add a multi-code. So I'll click, right click with my mouse, add a code, and we'll quickly go down to the multi-code section here, and I will click on uh, our root canal therapy and our PFM buildup and see 
pick an image that might fit that. They will go ahead and click a, a gold crown for fun. Click on save. And now we have a couple of uh, buttons here for our dental assistant Jane so she can quickly cl click on the button she's used to. Click on the tooth. In this case it puts in all the graphics for that root canal and the crown and it puts the procedures over here. If you make a mistake just re-click on it and they disappear um, from the graphic here at the top of the screen and here at the bottom of the screen. Okay. You can reorder your menu items if they want to move Jane down uh, her menu to the bottom. I can do that. Not a problem. So the screen you can make it make sense for your staff. And you don't have to be an expert on this. We have trainers that will guide, handhold, take your staff through this, help them set it all up. All right, let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and do some treatment planning. We have a brand new patient, John Cook, in our office for the first time. Um, so let's go ahead and see the actual workflow of the program, how it works. I'm going to tell you it takes less clicks to do something in Denimax than in any other system that I've seen. Okay, so if you're doing that Pepsi Coke commercial, <laughs> we're less clicks than the other guys. When you have when you have a patient sitting in a chair staring at you, that is really important. This program is simple and easy to use. It. So um, the first thing you might do if you have the full-on version of the software is to take an X-ray, right? Especially if it's a brand new patient. So I'm going to go to the upper right-hand corner of my screen. I'm going to click on the little X-ray button here. And it's going to select John Cook, and I'll go ahead and take an X-ray. Okay, you have these oversized buttons. Take a, click on Take X-ray. If I'm taking a periapical, I'll just click on the two. Perhaps I'm taking um, a full mouth X-ray series, or in this case, um, for my demo, let's just take some bite ones. So click over here, and you select your tooth, and uh, you insert that digital X-ray sensor in the patient's mouth, the positioner, and just like you do now, you're going to go ahead and hit the juice button on the X-ray head, and automatically the program is going to pop in the X-ray for that tooth. Okay, let's go ahead. Um, we'll go ahead and pop in a uh, right molar x-ray. Boom, boom. The program will automatically sequence to the next one, number two. Let's go ahead and take our x-rays here. And very quickly and very easily we have our x-rays. If you have an x-ray or a series of x-rays associated with a tooth, it will show you a little number below the tooth. In this case, I just took uh, four bite wings. So there's just one series of x-rays associated with these teeth. Okay. So if I click on it, it will take me right to that x-ray. Okay. So this x-ray tab, I can have lots of x-rays here on my tab. So you can move your x-ray tab over here to the right, freeing up some space here at the bottom of your screen. If you'd like, you can go ahead and zoom into your x-rays, right-click on them, and uh, view your x-rays while you're doing your treatment planning. So you can view the x-ray while you're clicking your buttons. And so let's go ahead and do some treatment planning. Um, here on your charting screen, um, we have our conditions, our plan items are in red, our completed items are in blue. You also have items that could be declined or referred out appearing in purple. So the first thing we might want to do is show our conditions. Um, the patient already um, has their uh, third molars uh, been extracted, so we'll click on our missing tooth button here and click on all of our wisdom teeth. Okay, and take those out right out. Um, maybe um, you might want to show additional information uh, that are conditions. Uh, conditions aren't being built out just for your own clinician use where you can see um, graphically here at the top of your screen and here at the bottom of the screen uh, almost like a diagnosis, a condition, you know, the state of the mouth. Uh, so if you wanted to view a cracked tooth, you can click on the cracked tooth button, click on the tooth here. Um, maybe the tooth is abscessed, you can click on the abscess button and then click on the tooth and it will draw. Our conditions are in pink, so it's drawing a pink circle around the, around the tooth roots. John Cook is a new patient to my office, but he's been to the dentist before. So um, let's go ahead and enter in items that have been completed by another dentist, by his previous dentist. Okay, so for entry mode, we're changing that to completed by other dentist. Um, so uh, we can go back up here to our restorative button here, and let's say uh, in his, at his previous uh, dentist that he had a lot of amalgams placed in his mouth. So we can click on the amalgam button here and show the amalgams uh, that were placed in his mouth. Now we're going to go ahead and enter in the new items, our treatment plan items for us. So we'll make sure entry mode is selected as planned. Any, anything that's a planned item is going to show in red because we haven't selected the red here for planned items. Okay. The first thing I probably want to do is get John out of pain. So I have this wonderful multi-code um, with a button associated with it for a crown, a uh, root canal, core buildup, seating the crown. So we'll click on the button. And we'll go ahead and we'll click on tooth number two. 
And with really one click here, I've captured all of that information. I have my crown, my core buildup, my seat, and my molar root canal. It's very fast, very efficient. I told you it's less clicks. <laughs> we'll go to ahead and go to tooth number three. And that's going to probably look, need an MOD on that one. So I'll go to my restore button. I have an MOD button already set up. One click there, one click here, and boom, I have my MOD. What's neat is that you can see the work that was performed by the previous dentist here in green. I can see my pending work, my treatment plan in red around it. You can even see that little pink crack below the uh, the crown here. Maybe if I change that to another color, that'll be more predominant. You can see that a little better. We'll change it to maroon. You can see the crack though below the crown. You, so you can see, you know, your conditions. You can see previous work performed by another dentist. You can see treatment plan items all together graphically here on this one screen, making it very useful, providing all the information there visually. Okay, let's go ahead and enter in some more composites. We're going to go ahead and take care of this occlusal composite there. And uh, now we have our screen full of treatment plan items. Let me declutter my screen a little bit. So for my view mode, I only want to view plan items. So I'm going to deselect all these other items here. And we can see that uh, I'm showing only my red items. I completed by another dentist, I only a pair of green up here at the top, but a green here at the bottom. Okay. So, but we're only going to view red items, all right? And we're going to number those. And so, unless we sedate uh, John, we're not going to do all this at once. And I don't sedate my office. So, uh, number one, I think we said we're going to do that molar root canal. So, I'll click on that. And perhaps I'll do my core buildup. So, I'll control click on that and then press the one key on my keyboard. And then we have our first visit set up, okay? After that, I might want to have him come back. We'll do the crown. And maybe I'll even do some resins here in my example. And so we'll do the resin on tooth number three. Okay, that's my second appointment. And then maybe after that, I'll go ahead and do the resin on tooth number 31. And I'll even do a seat my crown at that time. All right. And so very easily and quickly, I've numbered my training plan. One, two, and three. Uh, you might call that phasing. There's different terms for that, but I now have my treatment plan broken up into visits. So let's go ahead and present the treatment plan to John. And so here on the left-hand side of my screen, I'm going to go ahead and click on Treatment Estimate, okay? And then I can go ahead and click on Sign. And so from this screen, it's going to show what I did today, but it's also going to show me the visits I'm going to have in the future with John. My first appointment, second appointment, third appointment. It's going to show my regular fee for those appointments. Because I'm a preferred provider office for Delta Dental, it's going to show my reduced fee. It's going to show the insurance portion of that reduced fee, and it's going to show the actual patient portion, okay, what John needs to be prepared to pay when he comes for these visits. So this is a very detailed treatment plan that's going to be extremely helpful for your front desk in communicating to John that his appointment normally would be $850 for that first visit, but he's only having to pay $210.40 out of pocket because we are preferred provider for Delta Dental, um, accepting a reduced uh, fee schedule and then and then having Delta Dental pay for most of that. So we'll have John sign here at the bottom. John Cook. Since your pad is uh, accepting pressure points and all sorts of information to make it a legal signature. We'll go ahead and click on Save, and that quickly and that easily, we've captured John's treatment plan electronically. Um, so we have that from any part of the program. We can easily and quickly find his treatment plan in the software. Okay. So now um, we can go back into Dentamax um, and uh, perhaps we'll make a new appointment uh, maybe the following week on the 9th. We'll double click at 8 o'clock in the morning. Type in John's name, John Cook. There he is. We'll select his name. Uh, we have this wonderful button on the left hand side of the screen called Add from Treatment Plan. We'll click on that. And then here's our uh, next uh, appointment. We're going to do all the uh, all the ones, so I'll just drop those down to this appointment and we'll close our screen very easily and quickly. We've scheduled our root canal, our RCT, and our crown buildup. How neat is that? Other additional features in the charting screen include the ability to print out your charting screen. You can print it out in full color if you have a color printer and give it to your patient. Just click on print plan here at the bottom, click on OK, okay and there's your charting screen. Okay. Also, you can just flow right over to the perio screen. Just click on New Perio Exam. If you find that they have gum disease, you might want to go directly over to your perio exam screen. You might want to record your clinical notes while you're here on the charting screen. Let's go ahead and click on the Clinical Notes tab. Um, you can go ahead and click on Add a Note here, or the preferred method for me is I have a clinical note button set up already. 
um, our trainer can help you do this. They're easy to set up. And we'll, we'll go ahead and click on the PFM button. And then I'll click on my tooth, number two. And, and, and from here, I can go ahead and fill in the blanks. So I'll set up my own regular note that I put in typically for a patient. But topical anesthetics, that might change. So I use lidocaine in this case. They could be allergic to it, so I might be using something else for a different patient. In this case, it's lidocaine. We'll double click. How many carpools did I actually use? We'll go ahead and double click on three in this case. And you can go right through your note and those variables that change depending on the patient, what you did in the procedure, you can double click on those on those uh, variables. Composite shade that it was an A3, go right through and very easily and quickly we've captured our note. This is fast, this is very quick, it's very efficient. Again, your patient's there, your operatory, and you're having to be quick as you do this work. There's a lot of information on your charting screen. You can see that they're on Delta Dental of Arizona. If you click on the little notepad here, it's going to show you additional notes associated with Delta Dental of Arizona. Um, here to the right, we can see that they have a, wow, a $5,000 max, and uh, they haven't used any of it. Zero has been used so far. So that might be important information for you to know there in the operatory as you're working on this patient. Perhaps you're actually doing the work. You're not creating a treatment plan. So you might want to post this information directly over to the ledger so your office manager can bill it out to the insurance company. And so in this case, maybe we're doing some uh, MOD composites, so I'll click on my button for that. And we can easily and quickly click on the teeth. We're replacing our MODs. And it's showing this in blue because it's a completed item. And it actually sent this information directly over to the ledger screen because our entry mode, again, was completed. Let's go ahead and verify that. We'll click on ledger here at the top of our screen. And boom, um, we can see that, yes, in fact, these items were sent directly over to the ledger from our charting screen. So as you can see the charting screen is very powerful, very comprehensive, and extremely fast and easy to use. A lot less clicks than the other systems.